the moment. You gonna run away from it, or you gonna step up and take it? I get buckets. So Uncle Drew has been around for a number of years now, and to be quite honest, he's been quite entertaining. And now Pepsi has decided to take said character and make a full length feature film about him. But how was it? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Uncle Drew. I really do appreciate it. I remember when I first saw the trailer for Uncle Drew, it was around the time that Black Panther was about to be released in theaters or right when it was in theaters. I said to myself, oh, I remember that character from YouTube, the Pepsi commercials. He's funny. You know, I'm entertained. I like the cast. I like Little Red Howie from Get Out. You know, I'm on board. This seems like it's going to be a good time. But when I actually got into the theaters and actually on my way to the theaters and when the lights was turning down, I honestly said to myself, like, I really have no idea where they're going with this film, what the tone is going to be. I had no idea what to expect. Now, this movie is being directed by Charles Stone III. Whether you're familiar with him or not, I am personally. He directed Drumline with Nick Cannon, also Paid in Full, which is another favorite of mine, a cult classic, especially in the black community, and Mr. 3000 starring the late Bernie Mac. Rest in peace, my brother. And what the film is about is you have Little Red Howry. He has a girlfriend being played by Tiffany Haddish. You know, he's more into her than she's into him. You know, we've all heard that story before. But he takes his life savings and he puts it up because he wants to enter in this Harlem street ball basketball tournament um, called Rutgers. And it's just legendary. I mean, this is the 50th year anniversary. He feels that, hey, man, if I win this tournament, I'm going to get the bragging rights. I'm going to get the cash money. And me and Tiffany had his character. I forgot her name. But we're going to get married and we're going to start a family, you know, but unfortunate events happen. He loses his team and all of a sudden Uncle Drew just comes out of nowhere. This legend from way back in the day that was just crossing and breaking everybody's ankles on the court disappears. But Uncle Drew just pops back up and that's where the film picks up, you know, these two teams up. And, you know, he doesn't have a new team anymore. He has Uncle Drew and Uncle Drew's like, hey, I don't mind getting down with you, bro, but it has to be my rules. It has to be my team and it has to be my way and you know that is where the film progresses now i did like the intro of this film um it set the tone for me initially but actually when i was starting to get to know the characters especially tiffany haddish and little red howry i just wasn't feeling them that much and i started to get down because i just did not know what to expect or like where they was going with this movie i mean i don't know if this was a film that i was supposed to be taking seriously if this was supposed to be a comedy a serious comedy i just did not know but lo and behold uh, things did pick up and everything start did start to come together actually in the very beginning I kind of got the uh, mindset of like you know is this kind of like a black version of an Adam Sandler movie the old school Adam Sandler not the new school you know because right now in my opinion all he's doing is just making crap and just doing cash grabs I mean he's having fun if that's what you want to do but I just really don't feel like he's putting effort into his work and that's kind of how I started to feel about Uncle Drew now one of the reasons I was not a big fan of Little Red Howie's character at first uh, his name in the film was Dax was because he just wasn't anyone to stand up for himself. He seemed like a pushover and he just seemed like a people pleaser. And, you know, if that's the type of life you live, you're just never going to be happy. And I just really couldn't get on board with him at that point. So eventually I did get on board with Dax's character. Uh, he was funny and I like to laugh. And, you know, he's a comedian, in my opinion. Um, he's the way he was just interacting with the people around him. I was kind of saying to myself, you know, if I was in this situation, I would react the same way too. when it comes to Uncle Drew played by uh, Kyrie Irving, who is a real life NBA basketball star or legend who is playing right now. I did not like the intro to Uncle Drew. I mean, you know, it's coming. You know that 
Uh, there's going to be a basketball game on the court and people are going to be playing not up to his standards and he's going to be to the side talking trash like, oh, I can do better and somebody calls him out and he goes out there and, you know, just kind of does a man in front of everybody. That's cool and all that good stuff, but I kind of felt like that sequence of, sequence of events in this film was rushed. I don't know why they had to hurry. I just kind of wanted them to slow down. I mean, it was just kind of too on the nose for me, but it was still entertaining and I liked it, and I think Kyrie Irving did a great job. I actually think all the characters did a great job in this movie, other than one gentleman uh, by the name of Nick Crow. He was the villain in the film, or maybe I guess you can say the antagonist, and he was just a little bit over the top for me. I know that this film is a comedy, and a lot of people will just say, okay, Brandon, you don't have to take it that serious. And no, I like silly things, but at the same time, silly things has to match everything else around you. You know, I mean, a film needs to set the rules of the universe and stick to it. And the film did that early on, uh, but his character was just too over the top. I mean, just like, I understand that the film has to set up an antagonist for um, you not to like him for the rooted, for the rootiness, the audience. The film has to give the audience somebody to root for and somebody to root against. And of course, we are rooting against Nick Crow's character. But like I said, it's just it, it just didn't fit with everything else. I mean, he would just come through like, yeah, you know, I'm the guy that you're not supposed to like. I'm, I'm, I'm smack. I mean, that's just kind of the way he came across. And I just not I just wasn't feeling him. But every other every other character in the film, I adored. I love especially Lil Real Howry. I loved him more and more and more as the film went on. Just as a character on screen, I love everything about his backstory, even though it was simple. It was funny and it had a level level of depth to it. Um, I said Uncle Drew did a great job being played by Kyrie uh, Irving. Uh, Lisa Leslie is in this. She did a great job, too. Shaquille O'Neal is in this. I mean, this guy is just a big kid. I was watching this movie and I was just saying to myself, man, I would love to be a fly on the wall on set while they was filming this because I know in between takes they was having such a great time. Of course, you also have Nate Robinson, Reggie Miller and Chris Webber in the film as well. And they all did a great job, too, especially uh, Reggie Miller and Chris Webber. Nate Robinson's character, he did not have that many lines, but the time when the film was focused on him, it did pop, it did shine, he did do the film justice but reggie miller i was not expecting him to have uh such great comedic timing he did a great job and chris weber too uh by priest i mean there's this he's a he, his name is priest and he's a preacher uh he's married to uh lisa leslie's character uh whose name is betty lou and I like the relationship that they had between each other. It was a little corny at times, but corny is not a bad thing. I like good corny. Good corny can be a great thing. And just, you know, me as a black man and growing up in the black church and seeing the church scene that they had in this movie that having to do with baptism and all that, it was hilarious. I was lo uh, laughing my ass off. And this was one of the scenes here to where um, Dax's character really elevated the film for me because, like I said earlier, he was really reacting a way I would like man what are you doing you can't do that that's crazy if you do that you know this is what's going to happen and I don't want to be too specific right now because I don't want to ruin the film for you and you probably know what I'm talking about just from the trailers but just in case you haven't I laugh my butt off in the church scene and just to talk about Chris Webb's character just a little bit more priest I really did feel like you know it was a real character in beneath it all like I mean yes he's in makeup and the makeup was a good job and you know that's Chris Webber under there but you just the way you know when he wasn't acting silly and just kind of calming down settling and just having dialogue with the other characters in the film about his wife about his life about things back in the day about why the group fell apart I was like man this really feels like a real character you know everybody else did not feel like a real character but I'm not saying that they're bad I mean they were just you know comedic people on screen but I really did feel something from uh, Kyrie Irving's character or Uncle Drew and Priest being played by uh, uh, Chris Webber. Besides that, the film is funny as hell. I was laughing my butt off from beginning to end in this entire movie. I wasn't just screaming at the top of my lungs like, oh, ha, 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 ha. 
But there was a good number of times so I was chuckling and hard and everybody else in the theater was laughing too. I mean, it was a good um, experience for everybody. And please, if you go see this, go see this with as many people in the movie theater as you possibly can. Some people may not like to do that and like to stretch out, but I don't know, for some reason, this is just a movie that you just want to see with family and friends. I think it enhances the experience. And it, I mean, I went by myself, but I was laughing and looking to my left and my right and they was doing that too. Just like, man, can you believe they're doing this crazy stuff on screen right now? This is great. I'm loving this. So, I mean, it's funny as hell. I was loving the characters. Uh, pretty much a great film all around. Um, also, what's surprising is for a film that you know a lot of people may not take seriously, and that's perfectly fine. There was a lot of heart to this film too, a lot of sentimental value. You know what I'm saying? Like you really got to understand what was important to people in this film, why they love basketball so much, what persons they love, what persons they like and didn't like, and things like that. What motivated them? And they had a lot of a lot of that, and I, I loved every bit of that. Now on the flip side, a thing that I did not like about the film and this this is just really my only gripe is that, well, first of all, my gripe was the Nick Crow character. I did not like him at all. But my next gripe is why you had all these great sentimental value uh, with all these scenes with a lot of sentimental value, love and heart. I felt like they was kind of rushed through just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's kind of just like they was worried that, you know, people just wasn't going to be feeling that and they wanted to get to the last. So they just kind of like cut it kind of quick. And I'm like, no, just stay right here in the film just a little bit. Like, I, I want to see more of this. Like, you don't have to rush through. I mean, every time a problem would arise in the film, it was resolved just like this. And I just kind of wish they would have fleshed that out a little bit more. And you know that in America, we have a three X structure in majority of our films. And right at the end of the second act, in the beginning of the third, there's always a character fallout. Like, well, F you, man, and F you, or just something happens, and this character goes this way, and then the character that they had some beef with, they come in at the last minute and, you know, make up at the very end. And so when they had that portion of the film, yes, the the, the uh, fallout was real, but it would just rush through a little bit, and I kind of wish they just would have stuck there a little bit longer. As far as all the basketball is concerned, that's great. There are a lot of people but got the ankles broken this um, all the basketball games felt real the ending championship and the Rutgers tournament I ha actually had no idea if the team that we're rooting for is going to win or lose I really just did not know I had no clue and that's just a, a, a accolade or a testament of how great I want to um, say the film is because you know you don't want things to be predictable and it wasn't here I really did not know until that last shot uh, dropped or well, I don't know if it dropped or if they made it I'm teasing you right now I'm not going to tell you who won you're just going to have to see the film for yourself but you know I, I, I really did like it Um, it, the film started out a bit slow but it got better and better and better other than the villain and them kind of rushing through the sentimental moments there was nothing uh, for me to complain about I talked about the church scene how that was funny the dialogue was great there was a little scene at a club which was very funny I mean this is a movie that I know for a fact that I'm going to be buying on Blu-ray I'm not going to buy it on 4K because there's just no point of doing that but I will be buying this on Blu-ray um, this is a movie to where if you know a year from now if I'm flipping through channels and I see that they have Uncle Drew playing I can just stop what I'm doing and watch the remainder of the film no matter what point is it I mean I can see my friends coming over and we have this plan oh it's Uncle Drew yeah turn it up bro you know I mean it was just a great film I really did enjoy it and I think you will too if I had to rate Uncle Drew out of a 1 out of 10 I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 yes an 8 out of 10 but guys that is just my opinion have you seen uncle drew have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know down in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up if you don't that's fine but you can still subscribe to my channel you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for uncle drew and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon kithavery and that's just my opinion peace